Okay, we're looking at the, the same circuit that I used uh, uh, with the title over unity or what. What I've done is breadboarded everything neatly, or at least a lot neater than I normally do things, uh, so that we can run the test first with using analog meters to make sure that my uh, readings were not erroneous. And we're using all the same parts. There's the, the rod that got the 216 degrees. You can see the burnt area at the end. Um, the, this, this is the, uh, the cooling uh, fan, which I initially I'll not have hooked up. It draws about 9 tenths of an amp. Uh, hooked up, it'll add to that draw from the power supply, but will gain an, uh, about an amp uh, in the circuit itself. This is uh, the uh, standard 3 volt uh, cell that I've used now on all my tests. And this is the, uh, the MOSFET part of the circuit, okay, that drives the rod. And these leads here run over to the lab box. And the lab box, uh, get the you're looking at the amplitude is the level control on the uh, schematic and the DC offset is the bias control. So just refer to that. So it's just a simple, uh, this is a, a, a square wave. Um, that's the course frequency adjustment there. And the fine, you got the amplitude and, and all those other adjustments. So we're going to, uh, well what's going to be neat, you're going to hear the, uh, I don't have the magnet speaker hooked up on this one. Uh, the way I got this rod uh, just mounted uh, with some brads uh, holding it up, it telegraphs the uh, sound just fa fantastic uh, uh, through the, the board there. So uh, anyway, PC power supply using the 12 volt lead out to run anything. This amp meter is going to be the current from the power supply and this is the cell su uh, supply. Now I had originally two identical ones of these Beware when you buy these. They're only four dollars and ninety-five cents, freight paid from China, and they say they're twenty amp meters. No, sir, they are not. They are milliamp meters, and you have to make your own shunt. You can see the shunt coil I put on the back. Well, guess what? I didn't do a good sovereign job on the second one. It came loose and burned out the winding, so I had to come up with this here. So, in other words, the only thing about twenty amps is what's printed on the uh, the front. So you can buy these uh, with a range of five amps or 10 amps or 20, but remember you're going to have to construct the, the, the shunt and you're going to have to calibrate it. Here's a calibration so that the, these meters were equal. You see just that little piece of wire between the two coils that was to make the fine adjustment so it was a perfect um, calibration between the two meters. They don't look the same, but they read the same. And then after this we're going to run it with digital because it's just so much easier to see the digital meters. Okay, we are looking at the two analog meters. The one on the left is going to measure the current being drawn from the power supply. The power supply, we're using the yellow lead, which is the 12 volt lead, and the big meter, which I got masked off so we can just pay, to pay attention to that scale, uh, is in series with the MOSFET to the cell. Uh, there is true, there is a transformer, the rod is a transformer, but it's a one-to-one, -one, so we cannot contribute the doubling of current, or better than doubling the current, from the transformer because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I have made five of these transformers, uh, rods, uh, and the only difference has been uh, with when using lighter uh, gauge wire is you can't draw as much current through there. Uh, the only downside to this circuit is that uh, without cooling, the rod gets tremendous amount of heat. However, that can be put to an advantage using this circuit for some other purpose. So, going to turn it on, and basically you're going to hear, you're going to see the needles jump up here. One, two, three. And notice that we're pulling over a little bit over five amps in the cell, but we're drawing a little bit less than two and a half amps from the power supply. So we have what looks like an over unity of over 220 some percent, just exactly the way it was when I did the digitals. Now I can change the, the, uh, the frequency and you'll see, you see change, but we're looking for this resonant point and it's always these raspy sounds where you hear the, Right there is the best, the best point. Okay, 
And so um, the, the, the amplitude is also important. as well as the bias on the MOSFET is very important. The idea here, we're going to use three of these uh, identical circuits, which should give me at least 15 amps at full resonance or close to 50 uh, just coming out of resonance. But the heat will be tremendous coming out of the, the rod, so we need to do some type of cooling. Uh, I'm going to next uh, the next thing you're going to see, we're just going to go ahead and show the setup using the digital meters. And uh, the digital meters are so much easier to use. Now, if I had, the, if I had my thing do it over again, I would have made these uh, meter scales work uh, with uh, possibly just a, a 5 amp uh, on the, uh, the power supply, because we don't get any close to 5 amp draw, and use a, uh, a 10 amp on the, uh, the current cell. But this is what I had to use. I've calibrated them. These meters are equal. In fact, uh, you'll see when I was prepping the one that I accidentally burned up, I had them absolutely matched. So hang on here. Here comes the next section. Okay, we're going to now uh, run the, 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 the test again. Uh, I want you to look at the arrangement of the meters. The first one on the left is the uh, the current being drawn from the power supply. The power supply is hooked up to the yellow lead. Uh, or the circuit's hooked up the yellow lead uh, and uh, it's outputting 12 volts uh, of current or uh, voltage and the middle one is going to be the the current uh, being drawn by the cell and the third one is the voltage across the cell now you see that's at about 1.41 right now uh, 40 uh, that is it's just the residual uh, from when I was just testing it um, it's like a battery. It'll bleed off pretty fast. Not a lot of current being stored in there. This is a simple uh, two element cell uh, with a, a screen accelerator as the anode uh, lead. This works extremely well and, uh, and, and you get um, a max amount. So we're going to turn this on and we're going to try to bring it up through a few resonant points and you'll notice what you're going to do is want to divide this number by that number to get your over unity and this will be depending on what the settings will be will be somewhere uh, <coughs> excuse me somewhere between 2.45 and maybe as high as 3 volts okay and by the way the the rating of the power supply itself uh, on this computer power supply is 14 amps but you can really get a lot more out of it when you're not using the rest of the, the circuits. You're not using the 3.3 volt or the 5 volt. So you can get quite a few. I've run, I think, on this. I've run as high as 40 amps on that. But uh, if you want to build one of these power supplies up and duplicate what I'm doing, try to find a power supply that has the, uh, the 12 volt rating as high as possible. Okay, we're going to turn it on. You're going to hear the oscillator. Okay, and we're going to First of all, we're going to kind of go and just sweep the frequency. I'm on the, uh, the scale. I'm on the 10K scale. And I'm down, down in the lower part of that. So I'm, you can measure the audio frequency. Time. So down here, you can see we're doing uh, very little. Uh, we are getting something out, but not much. So we're going to bring it up. Okay, I had to touch up the amplitude just a hair to get it started. So we're looking at getting the adjusting this for the lowest possible current draw. Now we're starting to get there. <laughs> 